Hey everybody, it's Patrick and Sarah from the Board Meeples, and today we're going to do a how to play the Taverns of Tiefenthal. Which is a two to four player game designed by Wolfgang Varsh and published by North Star Games. As always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more board game content. Thanks. Thank you. Taverns of Tiefenthal is a dice placement and deck building game. The goal is to create the most successful tavern and make the right improvements to attract wealthy guests and nobles and ensure your tavern is the talk of the town. Start by setting up the play area. You'll place the monastery board in the center with the summer side facing up. Place the three schnapps tiles in the recesses so the schnapps aren't showing. Above the monastery board, you'll place the turn marker and on the board you'll place three counter guests per player and return the rest to the box. Now there are quite a few cards to set out, which will be what the players will build their deck with. First, we have tavern cards, which have a Thaler cost, guest cards, which have a beer cost, and noble cards, which have no cost, but are colored purple. Take the tavern cards and return to the box the cards which show a white cube at the top. The remaining tavern cards will be sorted by their Thaler cost in face-up piles close to the monastery board. Near the tavern cards, you'll place the guest cards. There are eight guests, which have a cost of three beers. Remove those from the other guests and place them in a face-up pile. Then remove the noble cards and set them aside. Shuffle the remaining guest cards, draw four cards, and place them in a face-up row beside the guests that cost three beers. The rest of the cards will form a face-down draw pile to the left of the guests and nobles. Each player will take their tavern board, their upgradable equipment, a yellow and brown cube, a coaster, four white dice, a monastery marker, and colored dice matching the color on their tavern board, as well as their starting deck of cards of the same color. You will align all the upgrade pieces of your tavern so that the upgrade cost is showing in the top left corner and the bartender is aligned with the victory points face down. Each player will add one server, one table, and one brewer from the tavern cards into their starting deck and shuffle them to create a draw pile which will be placed above their assembled tavern. Each player will place their yellow and brown cubes on the zero spaces of their beer storage and safe. Take the coaster with four white dice and place it next to your tavern with the colored dice placed within reach off to the side. The monastery marker will be placed on the zero space of the track of the monastery board. Now take and assemble the beer mug to assign a first player. When we play, we like to cut the guest deck and the player who reveals the highest cost guest gets to go first. The remaining pieces will be returned to the game box as they are used in different modules and the game is now ready to begin. Taverns of Tiefenthal is played over eight turns, which is indicated by the moon tracker of the monastery board. Each turn consists of seven phases, which are played in this order. A new evening in the tavern, the guests arrive, here comes the server, can I take your order, plan your actions, serve the guests, and finally, closing time. Let's go over these phases in more detail. The starting player moves the moon to the next space of the turn track. In the first turn, you will not move the moon as it was placed in the first space. When the moon is moved onto a symbol, all players will receive the bonus shown. All players will simultaneously draw cards from their deck to fill their tavern board. Any tavern cards that are drawn, such as tables, dishwashers, servers, brewers, and barbucks, will be placed in the corresponding areas of the tavern board to temporarily upgrade your equipment. Guests and nobles, on the other hand, will be placed at empty tables in the tavern. Nobles are unique guests that are social and like to sit with other nobles. So multiple nobles can share one table, but all other guests must take up one table per guest. Once all the tables on every board are filled, you will stop drawing cards and this phase ends. If you run out of cards but have tables left, simply shuffle your discard pile to form a new deck and continue drawing until the tables are filled. For each server on your board, whether it was drawn from a tavern card or there as a permanent upgrade, take and roll one colored dice and place it on each server card. You can have a maximum of three additional dice, regardless of whether you have more servers than this. These dice will be used later in the serving phase. All players will roll the four white dice simultaneously and place them on their coasters. Now starting with the first player and continuing in turn order, players will choose one white dice off of their coasters and place it below their tavern board. 
Then once all players have taken one dice, all players will rotate their coasters with the three remaining dice to the left. With the three dice now on the coasters, players will repeat this process until each player has four white dice below their tavern board and all the coasters are empty. These dice will be used with the colored dice from the previous phase during the serving phase. Before performing actions in the serving phase, you'll look at all the white and colored dice you chose and assign them to action spaces on your tavern board. There are certain rules for placing dice. For example, certain guests or spaces on your tavern board will have a specific number on them, meaning that die face grants the action next to the action space, while others will show a question mark, which means any die face can be placed here to gain that action. If there is a green arrow with a 1x, it means you can only put one die here to gain the action. However, a space depicting a green arrow with multiple dots means any number of dice can be placed here to take that action more than once. If you have a dishwasher, you can place a die on an action space and treat the die as one number higher. Do not rotate the die when you use the dishwasher. You can also use multiple dishwashers on the same die to increase the value by more than one. If there are multiple nobles in your tavern, you're only able to use one die on the topmost noble. When placing dice, if you run out of available action spaces, the remaining dice are wasted this turn. In the serving phase, each player will perform actions based on their placed dice in turn order, starting with the first player. As you take actions, you will remove the dice off of your tavern board and then take the depicted action. So if you use the monk, you would immediately move your monastery marker each time you remove a die there. If your marker lands on a space with a bonus, you receive that bonus immediately. You receive Thalers to buy tavern cards or permanently upgrade equipment in your tavern. The upgrade cost is listed in the top left corner of the tile and can be reduced for certain equipment by returning one or more of the tavern cards from the area back to the supply, just as long as those cards were drawn during the arrival phase this turn. If you upgrade any equipment, not only do you gain the permanent bonus for the upgrade, but you will also gain a noble card to be placed into your deck. This bonus is often overlooked, so this symbol above the bartender is designed to remind you of that. You receive beer to spend when you use barbucks and brewers. The barbuck tavern card always gives you one beer, but each brewer will gain you one additional beer for each die you place in the brewer action space. Each turn, you may only buy one of each type of tavern card and only recruit one guest maximum, but you can recruit any number of nobles by paying the cost listed on the monastery board and taking the number of noble cards indicated next to that cost. Anytime you would gain a noble, guest, or tavern card by buying it or through upgrades, you will grab the card and place it face down on your draw pile for use next turn. Make sure you replenish the guest cards from the draw deck if there is ever an empty space showing in the row of guest cards. As soon as you can't or don't want to perform any more actions, your serving phase ends. If you have thalers or beer left over, you can store two thalers in your safe and two beer in your beer storage. However, the excess is lost at the end of your turn. To store more than this, you will have to upgrade this equipment by paying the upgrade cost. Players will now discard all the cards placed on their tavern boards this turn and rotate the first player marker clockwise, and a new turn begins, starting with a new evening in the tavern. However, if the moon tracker is in the last space of the turn track at the end of a turn, the game ends and final scoring takes place. Players will count the victory points on all of their cards in their deck and discard pile. The victory points are listed on the top right corner of the cards. The player with the most points wins. If there's a tie, then the player who stored the most thalers and beer is the winner. There are clarifications for all the symbols on the cards and tavern boards, as well as explanations for the upgrades and bonuses that you can receive, including from the monastery track listed on page 10 and 11 of the rulebook. In addition, there are variations to the rules called modules that are explained in the supplemental rulebook. So that's all there is to it. Let us know what you think, or if we missed anything, by commenting down below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. Thanks, see you next time.